Hi guys, sorry I got cut off on my video the last time, so we are leaving off at trying to find the hypotenuse of a 45-45-90 triangle. So we said that the X's were the legs. The hypotenuse, based on what we learned from the warm-up question, is we add a square or multiply that by a square root of two. So it's gonna be X square root of two. So whatever the leg is, we multiply that by the square root of two. So whatever this leg is, we multiply it by the square root of two. So that works for all of these 45, 45, 90 triangles. So if I have this triangle here, I can see that this is a 45, 45, 90 because of the fact that I have these two congruent sides and I have the right angle. So that means if this is six, this has to be six as well. And those are the legs. And then I take the leg and multiply it by the square root of two. So that's what the y value is there. So there's really no math to be done. Now we could check this with Pythagorean theorem, but we don't need to. We could check that six squared plus six squared equals six square roots of two squared. And it will, but we don't need to do that unless we doubt our rule. Now it gets a little bit trickier when they give us the hypotenuse instead. Because to go from the leg to the hypotenuse, we multiply the leg by the square root of two. So to go backwards, we have to take the hypotenuse and divide it by the square root of two. And this is a little bit trickier because we don't know this, this extra step about radicals. So this is gonna be a little bit tougher. So divide by the square root of two. So 10 equals the leg times the square root of two, which the leg is m. So I have to divide by the square root of two to get that m alone. So that's saying that m is 10 over the square root of two. Now this would be great if we could leave it this way, but of course mathematicians decided that that just doesn't work, that we can leave the square root of two in the bottom. So this would be the answer for m if we could leave it in that format, but they don't let us do that. So we need to talk about how to simplify this. So this is new to us. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna multiply each part by the radical. So I'm gonna multiply by the square root of two and the square root of two. What that's gonna do is the top is just gonna be 10 square roots of two. The bottom is gonna be square root of two times square root of two, which is square root of four, which we know the square root of four is two. So we find out m is 10 square roots of two over two. But we're not quite done yet because 10 over two can equal five. So that's what our m value is, is five square roots of two. Oops. Sorry, two hands to erase. So that was kind of a little advanced trick there. I kind of forgot that that showed up in this section, so I apologize if that was confusing. We'll hopefully try to do another example involving something similar to that. Now, a lot of them aren't this tough, so let's move on to one that's a little bit easier. So now this one, again, I'm given the hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse equals the leg, so this is the hypotenuse, it equals the leg times the square root of two. So we have six square roots of two equals k times the square root of two. So k is the leg and the hypotenuse is six square roots of two. So in order to solve this one, we can divide each side by the square root of two. Now this one works a lot nicer because this one, they get to just cancel. So we find out K is just six. Now some of you guys who don't like showing your work, you're gonna say, why did she show her work on that? And it's perfectly fine in this case for you just to say K has to be six because the leg times the square root of two will equal that. 
All right, let's move along to this one. Oh, and I don't know if I mentioned, um, just suggest pausing the video, rewinding if needed before you go in to submit your quiz. So I ask that you kind of go through these notes and make sure you're really understanding as we're going here or email me questions if needed. Now this next one, they give us one of the legs. So we know the other leg has to be the same because this is a 45, 45, 90. So these two have to be the same. So this has to be seven square roots of two. Now, if I know that these are the legs, I have to take the leg and multiply it by the square root of two to find the hypotenuse. So I have to take seven square roots of two and multiply it by the square root of two. So that's seven square roots of four, which would be seven times two, which will be 14. So C ends up being 14 in this case. All right, I'm gonna flip the page to the other side. We're gonna talk about the different types of triangle, and one other type of triangle. Um, hopefully these 45, 45, 90 triangles worked out okay for you. If not, I'd suggest watching that portion of the video again. Now 30, 60, 90 are similar, except that now we're gonna call the shortest side X. And the shortest side is across from the right, the 60 degree angle. Or not 60, sorry, 30 degree angle. So X is across from 30 degrees. So if you look across from 30 is our X. Now the hypotenuse of this one is easy. That's gonna be two times X. So two times the short side. Whatever the short side is, it's gonna be um, two times that to find the hypotenuse. Now the hypotenuse, again, is always across from the right angle, so hopefully that's not an issue to find that. Now the middle side, or they call it the longer side in some textbooks, is you take the short side and you multiply it by the square root of three. I know you're so like impressed that some mathematician came up with this, but um, it will help us. So short side times the square root of three. And the middle length side is always across from the 60 degree angle. So we'll start with example five here. Now 20 is our longest side, it's our hypotenuse. Now remember the hypotenuse is two times the short side. So if 20 equals two times x, I should be able to figure out pretty easily what x is. I divide those each by two. So x ends up being 10, that's our short side. Once I know that, if I know the short side, everything is based off the short side, then I take that and multiply it by the square root of three to find that middle side. So I'm gonna take that 10 and multiply it by the square root of three to find out why. a little bit trickier when we don't know one of the other sides so when we don't know um, well if, if we like we're given I guess the middle length side I guess that's the toughest kind so this one they've given us the middle length side so this is the x squared of 3 side now hopefully you look at that and see well I can tell what square root of, or what x is going to be because there's a square root of 3 in both places so I knew this was the middle length side, so I'm setting it equal to what I know it equals. I'm gonna divide by the square root of three, and those will cancel. 
So I'll find out x has to be 9. Because that's what we're told from this fact. Now if I know x is the short side and that equals 9, then I can take that to find the hypotenuse and double it. So I do 2 times the short side, and so that'll tell me my y has to be 18. Again, pause if needed. We're going to go back now to example 7. We have two more examples here. And then the homework is listed on the bottom. Now there is a quiz that I want you guys to do online to see that you guys actually took the notes. So I ask that you go um, do that after you've written down the notes. All right, so again, here's our short side. Now notice this time they're calling x something else. So be careful about that. So don't let that throw you off. That doesn't mean that this is the short side because that says x. Um, this is the short side because it's across from 30. Now remember the short side, I multiply the short side times two to find the hypotenuse. So I'm going to take 2 times 5 square roots of 3. So 2 times 5 is 10, and then I'm going to write that as the square root of 3. So x equals 10 square roots of 3. So I just multiplied the coefficients and then just brought that square root of 3 along. Now to find the middle length side, I take the short side and multiply it by the square root of 3. So I have to take 5 square roots of 3 and multiply it by the square root of 3. So this is the short side. Here's our square root of 3 because that's what they tell us to do here. Square root of 3 times square root of 3 is square root of 9, which is just 3. So we find out y just has to be 15. All right, and then finally, we'll finish up this last problem. It says an equilateral triangle has an altitude of 36 feet. So here's my equilateral triangle. So all equal sides, all equal angles. Now hopefully you remember an equilateral triangle, the angles are all 60. It's been a while since we've done those. So those are all 60. So they tell me the altitude is 36 feet. That's the height. So if I draw a line down the center, it gives me this altitude. They want the length of a side of the triangle. So they want to know, I'm going to call it x, but I probably shouldn't since that's not a short side, but we'll call it x there. They're all going to be the same. Except I'm going to take this triangle and I'm going to draw it over here. Because an altitude gives me a right, a right angle. And I know this is 60. And if I know that's 60 and this is 90, by our angle sum theorem, I can find this angle. So this ends up being 150, and you don't have to do this math if you realize this already. So this ends up being 30. So this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle, and I'm looking for this. But they've told me the height is 36, so that's the height of the triangle, which is this length. But notice, that's my middle length side. So this is the middle. This would be the short, and this would be the hypotenuse. So we have to work our way backwards. So if you recall from up here, if they tell us the middle length side, we have to set that equal to x squared root of 3. But I'm going to use, I'm going to use, um, let's not use x, let's use s for short. So I set the middle length side to s square roots of 3. Now this is kind of similar to the problem on the front side. This one's a little bit tricky because I have to divide by the square root of 3. But we don't like that square root in the denominator. The mathematicians don't like that. So we're going to multiply the top and bottom by the square root of 3. And I'll talk more about this in class when we're together. Square root of 3 times square root of 3 is square root of 9, which is just 3. And then 36 over 3 becomes 12. 
So this is my short side. So I found out the short side is 12 square to three based off all this math. Again, if you need to pause somewhere in there, go ahead and do that. Then to find our hypotenuse, I need to double it because the short side doubled is the hypotenuse, so times two. So to find our hypotenuse, which will be our x, I take two times 12 square roots of three. That's our short side. So that'll be two times 12 is 24, and then square root of three. Oh. There it is. All right, so our homework is listed there for us. And please try your best to do that. Um, if you guys could do the homework quiz as well or the notes quiz online, um, that's all on Schoology. And please feel free to email me any questions. I hope this um, worked out okay for you guys. Um, let me know if there's any issues. Have a great day and enjoy your snow day.